Welcome everybody. Tonight we are talking with Christine Wilson, who's done a number of um, informational workshops for us, as well as doing lots of yoga with us. And she was at our retreat in May and actually presented this um, topic and presentation at the retreat, and it was wildly popular. Um, so we wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to hear it. Um, it's based on the book, When the Body Says No, by Gabor Mate. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Um, and I didn't even get a chance to hear it at the retreat. So I'm really looking forward to, to hearing the presentation tonight. Um, I know everyone who attended it really really had a lot of great positive feedback about it. So I hope everyone enjoys. Christine is a certified yoga therapist. She does wonderful work for anyone who's gone through any kind of trauma using yoga to help to heal that trauma. And she works with clients one-on-one. -on -one. She does a 30-minute free consultation if you're interested in that. Um, and she's just a wonderful person, and we just love having her um, as part of our Breast Friends community. So with that, I'll let you go ahead and take it away, Christine. Thank you so much, Amy, and thank you everybody for taking the time to be here this evening. I really appreciate this, and I am really, really excited to share this material with you. Um, when I... Uh, when I first started doing my yoga therapy training, I was introduced to Dr. Gabor Mate. And the first thing somebody told me about him is that um, in his view, anger is actually um, depression. And that when we are manifesting depression, it is because we are suppressing some kind of underlying anger. And that really blew my mind that, um, and then thinking about it, thinking about people in my life who had been diagnosed with depression and that how much that made sense in the context of their situations, I was immediately intrigued by that and started watching videos on YouTube of which there are tons and tons if you're interested in learning more um, and then reading books and, and now presenting his material. Number one, because it really resonated with me so much how our thoughts and feelings affect our physical health and not in a way like, um, you know, it's, it's our fault for feeling or thinking a certain way, but in that when we think or feel anger, for instance, or fear, it creates a hormonal response in our bodies that then impact our physical health. And that was a totally new concept to me. And one of the beauties in Dr. Gabor Mate's work is I think it is really well aligned with the practice and the philosophy of yoga in that it's all about finding reconnection to ourselves, cultivating compassion for ourselves, being curious about ourselves enough to study ourselves and feel our own feelings without distracting ourselves from them or stuffing them down or suppressing them in, other, in another way just so that it can manifest with a different chemical reaction that will impact our bodies again in a different way. So it, it gives me a lot of hope because it leads me to believe that we have a lot more power over our physical health than we think we do, but also that it's not a quick or easy fix. It is, you know, in many, many cases, decades and decades of programming and thinking the same thoughts the same way over and over again. And it is literally a relearning and an undoing of all of that stuff that we've been brought up with in our families and in our society. So 
With that being said, that is why I think uh, his work, Dr. Gabor Mate and yoga is a wonderful match. So I'm going to um, share my screen here and you will see um, if all the stars align, you will see a little PowerPoint slide. I think it's this one. Does it look right, Amy? Yeah, Beautiful. that looks good. Beautiful. All right. So again, this is uh, his work here. And we'll go to the next slide. Beautiful. So we'll start by inviting presence, which is a practice that we do both in um, any kind of yoga practice, whether that's a physical practice of postures or asana or a meditation practice or a visualization practice or a breathing practice or some combination thereof. The first thing we want to do is be present in our bodies. Um, uh, the work of Dr. Gabor Mate, I think I've pretty much shared, but we'll get to that slide um, and about his book. And then we'll do the, the, a practice together at the end. But first, let's just invite some presence. So by presence, I mean to be fully here in your body and in this experience and not enraptured with your thoughts about this experience. So many of us as humans are thinking, I should be doing something else right now. Um, after this is over, I'm going to have a bowl of ice cream or I wish I wouldn't have called my mother today, or this is really stupid. She doesn't know what she's talking about. And we get wrapped up in our thoughts about the experience that we're having rather than have the experience. So I invite you to let go of any judgments or preconceived thoughts or expectations or any kind of attachment to what this workshop will be. And what it might mean to you and just let yourself be present. So the first thing we can do to do that is feel into our physical bodies. And if it's safe for you to close your eyes, I encourage you to do that because you can really come inward once your eyes are closed. And at least then you let go of all the stimulus from your senses, from your sight And just closing your eyes and coming inward a little bit, you might notice yourself a little more in your body. Maybe you notice your breath or your feet on the ground. You might feel your palms resting on your lap. Just really come inward, invite yourself to be home in your body. And when the thoughts do arise, and they will, because we're human, invite yourself to come back to whatever sensation is helping you to keep anchored in yourself. Whether that's focusing on your breath or your feet on the ground. or the sound of my voice, whatever you can sense, whatever you feel, let it keep you anchored here to this present moment. And then as you're ready, take a nice big inhale and then let it go out your nose or mouth with a heavy sigh. You might do that once or twice more if that felt nice. And become present in your body. 
And now with yourself fully here in this moment, you might like to blink your eyes open or maybe just continue to listen to the sound of my voice. And we'll move on to one of the basic anchors, one of the, the um, foundations of Dr. Gabor Mate's work is about attachment and authenticity. So we have two biological imperatives for survival. Well, the first, of course, being survival. We will do anything to survive. And there are two things that we really need to, to do in order to survive or to have or exhibit, um, especially when we're first born, especially when we're little kids. Humans stay with their parents longer than any other species on Earth. Children, babies, babies would not be able to survive without attachment to some human who can take care of them. In an ideal world, that's a biological parent, maybe even two. Um, and those parents are well-adjusted, mentally healthy people that have re well-regulated nervous systems, and they can take really healthy, connected care of this baby. But the baby has to have somebody, and it really doesn't judge who that somebody is. So they attach to this caregiver or they die, and they will do whatever is necessary to stay attached to this caregiver. If they get a feeling from the caregiver that if they cry a lot, the caregiver will yell at them and they don't like to be yelled at, eventually they'll learn that their caregiver does not respond well to crying and they'll learn to be quiet. Or, um, and that that's not like a conscious decision that the baby makes, right? The baby is just a body. They're not a thinking mind yet. So they implicitly hold this belief in their bodies that crying for help it will get bad results. It'll get an angry mom or maybe no mom at all or caregiver. Um, so it does whatever it needs to do in order to get that caregiver to take care of them. And sometimes we will develop what's called an attachment wound when the caregiver doesn't respond to our needs. And that is a grounds right there for developing anxiety as an adult. Um, the other biological imperative that we have in order to survive is authenticity. And I had heard before that it is important to be authentic in my yoga practice, but I had never really connected the dots of why I had to be authentic in order to survive. But that's literally how we listen to our gut feelings, how we tap into our intuition and how we keep ourselves safe. So if you're a, a young child and you, um, let's see here, you like to draw and you draw lots of pictures and maybe you draw on the wall and you get in lots of trouble for it. And maybe your caregiver rips up your drawings or yells at you for it or something. You might stifle your love of drawing in order to do that. Um, or maybe you don't want to eat your dinner and you're not hungry and your caregiver is like, you have to eat this dinner. You're not going to move from this table until you eat this whole entire dinner. And so you learn not to trust yourself. You learn not to express yourself. And when we do that, it creates cortisol in our bodies, which contribute to a whole bunch of health issues like osteoporosis and high blood pressure and high blood sugar and heavy abdominal fat and all kinds of things that are health risks for us. But that's exactly what happens when we suppress our emotions and when we suppress our gut feelings, um, we will create that cortisol and it just becomes a kind of a, a feedback loop on itself. So we also, when we suppress you know, any of our 
quote unquote negative feelings, we also begin to close ourselves off to our more positive feelings. Because if we're used to suppressing feelings, or even worse, if maybe you got really excited when your grandpa was going to take you to Disneyland and he said, You need to calm yourself down or we're not going to go, you might learn, Oh, when I'm really excited, I must remain calm. And you might never get to jump up and down and, and scream for joy because that's bad. And that's, again, something implicit that we hold in our bodies and we develop neuro pathways so that they become habits so that we can survive out in the world. And some of those neuro pathways are wonderful. It's wonderful to learn how to feed yourself and tie your shoes and eventually drive a car. Those are neuro pathways or what in yoga is known as samskaras or habits, habitual patterns um, that we learn in our bodies before we ever consciously make a decision to. Um, so we need to cultivate the courage to be our vulnerable, imperfect self. Um, and we need to share our feelings with ourselves in a way that feels safe to us and accepted by us. Because the, the thing is, all of this work happens inside ourselves. While we're children and we're still attaching to a caregiver, um, we have to have that caregiver for survival and we have to adapt to what they need us to be and maybe even to the point where we are no longer our authentic selves in order to keep that attachment safe or as safe it is, as it's going to be uh, for our survival. But eventually when we grow up, we have the option to kind of reparent ourselves and attach to our own selves in a healthy way. Some of us may never have the opportunity to do that with our actual caregivers or our partners, but we can always do that with ourselves.